Hey guys, here's another real quick tutorial on Cocos 2D and Xcode. In this one I'm going to cover how you set up your Cocos 2D environment for using ARC, which is the Automatic Reference Counting Facility that Xcode's latest editions give you. ARC makes it much easier to write your code because you're not going to have to worry about um, any kind of uh, manual releasing of your objects and your memory management woes are a lot uh, simpler. So um, I'm just going to go right ahead and run up Xcode here. I've already installed the Cocos 2D templates and I cover uh, how to get these templates and install that stuff in one of my other tutorials so check there or check online how to get Cocos 2D installed. Uh, once it is installed, just run up one of these templates and um, here I've got just the basic template. So I'm going to click Next and this is going to be ARC Tutorial. I'll use the iPhone standard one and click Next. And I'm just going to create it uh, inside of my little scratch folder here. So Xcode is going to go ahead and fill that up with all of the Cocos 2D uh, library files, just nicely accumulated there. And per default, uh, what happens, of course, is that all of these uh, Cocos files are just going to get compiled right alongside all of your own files. Now, here's the problem. Cocos 2D uh, currently does not support, like this code inside of here, uh, that does not support ARC. So that means that your code up here in these other files uh, cannot use ARC because it's being compiled all into the one target. So if you look here, you're just building this one binary and of course I can run this hopefully and just produce our, uh, our standard Hello World program. There it is. So that runs fine, but of course the problem is every time you want to go ahead and create a, um, a new uh, application, uh, you're going to run up against this issue where you have uh, no ARC and you have to do all your memory management manually. So what we're going to do here is just use a technique uh, that I actually found inside uh, Stefan Itterheim's really good book on learning Cocos 2D. That's it right there. Uh, it's great value. I thoroughly recommend you go out and buy Stefan's book. But um, I'm just using the technique that he supplies uh, or he recommends in there and I do find that it works really, really well. So um, basically the procedure is that we're going to create a separate library to encapsulate uh, all of the Cocos code and that's going to give us the ability to then set ARC off on that library whilst we still have ARC enabled for our own code. So to do that, the very first step is that we want to go ahead and actually uh, remove this lib uh, file set here from our target. So we choose delete. Now don't click move trash here, just remove the references. That's going to um, mean that we still have the files on the file system but uh, we just don't have it linked into this particular target of ours, so we remove those. Now we want to go ahead and add a new target. So I click up the top here and I have my add target and I'm going to create a Cocoa Touch static library. We'll click next there and I'm going to call this, uh, you should call it anything you like, but you just have to make sure that it's consistent I recommend using something without any spaces in it. I'm going to call mine Cocos 2D Libs. So this is going to be another target. Now for this one, we do not want to use automatic reference counting because as I mentioned, uh, Cocos does not support it. So OK, I'll click Finish on that. Now we have our new target. And uh, we just need to make a couple of quick adjustments so that the Cocos can find all of its code. Uh, so the first thing is uh, just to narrow it down and make it a little bit easier to find. Uh, type search up in here because both of the settings I want to change have the word search in them. So I want to change that to yes. 
and uh, under the header search paths what we want to do there is just change this so that it's going to recursively search inside of its own directories to find everything. So if I just click once and then wait a second, click again, I get the ability to type that recursive search uh, expression. Uh, now, now that we've got that stuff set up, I need to uh, go back into my original target over here. This is going to be the one that I'm actually going to create my game out of. Uh, and I need to go into my build phases and I need to add in this new library that we've uh, just created here so that a um, new target actually uses it. And there it is already. It's all set up for us. So we just pick that out, add it in. It's written red because we haven't built it yet. Now, uh, okay, so we have everything set up uh, so that our project is going to use this new target. But of course, we actually have to build it. So uh, what I want to do, uh, and this is a slight variation from uh, Stefan's recommendations, is um, I want to actually create a, a separate folder to put my uh, source code into uh, for the library. So I'm just going to use Finder to go into my um, directory structure that I've created here. And as you can see, we've got our Cocos 2D library there. And here's our ARC uh, library for our game or whatever. So what I want to do is actually move that folder over here so that I've got a little bit better uh, organization. That way, when I uh, check in my source code, it's going to be a lot easier for me to find my COCOS and maybe update it if I want to later down the track. OK, so we flick back here. And um, now what we need to do is to actually add in uh, all of those files so that our new library target can find them. So we're going to go Add Files. Uh, we need to make sure that it's going to be added to our new Cocos 2D Libs target. And we tell it where to find it, which is going to be inside of our Libs here. Now, you don't need that check because it's already inside, so uncheck that. And also, we want to create groups so that we can drill down into these uh, source code files if we uh, need to at a later date. So we just check Add on that. OK, now what we should have is uh, if we check inside of our libs directory here, uh, just double check that this actually happened correctly. So our .m file here should be added only to the library uh, and not to our main application, which is what we want. And uh, this libs folder, this can just be dragged down here inside of our uh, Cocos 2D library uh, like that. So we've got some nice organization that matches our on, uh, on disk structure to our uh, Xcode groups, because just remember these yellow folders are actually just uh, notional organizational things. So now we've got all that stuff set up. We've um, added in all of our files. And um, there's one last thing I need to do to make sure that uh, Cocos can actually build. Um, because I went and messed around um, with the uh, structure of those folders, I just need to go in here and on. OK, so uh, we've got our library stuff set up. Um, but um, in some places in our own code, we actually have uh, this uh, casmath includes. We just need to fix that. It just takes a real quick second. So change that to search inside of our Cocos 2D libs folder to find that file. OK, so now we've made all these changes. Our project should build. We're not quite finished yet, but let's just do a check build to make sure that everything does actually build. Um, OK, so that worked. Uh, and because our main ARC project depended on the libs directory, that should have built all of those targets for us. OK, let's just see if this runs for us. OK, now let's just see if this runs. All right, 
So there's our application. If you have issues with, uh, with it not running, just try doing a clean of everything because you may find you've got some old build artifacts lying around. So uh, in that case, just go up to your product menu and do a thorough clean of all your project. All right, so the very last step is that now that we have our uh, project split up, we've got our nice library here with all of our source code for Cocos. Uh, sitting inside of its directory, um, which is built without ARC. Now we want we want to do is go back to our original project, which is going to be our game. And um, what we want to actually do is um, set it up so that we're going to have ARC enabled. All right. So to do that, uh, the easiest way is actually to use. Uh, Xcode's refactoring uh, tool here, which works pretty well. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and make sure that our game that we're going to be writing is actually uh, turned into ARC by its conversion process, but not the library. This is the one that we've had to leave, obviously, un-ARC enabled. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and check to see if it can be converted, and it should be able to be. So we're converting it to ARC. Go ahead, say next. And uh, it's going to go through all that code and change it all around so that it actually can use ARC. Uh, we've got our um, old code there and our new code here on the left with its proposed changes. And yeah, that's all looking pretty good. So we just go ahead and save that. We get a prompt about the automatic snapshots. That's a good idea, so enable that. It's going to create a snapshot. If you use a uh, broad scope of refactoring again, you'll find that um, that enabling is actually useful there. So now what we should be able to do is go ahead and run this. And now we're ARC enabled. Okay, guys, well, I hope that was useful. Now you can build your own ARC enabled Cocos 2D projects and save yourself all the headache of that nasty memory management, which can be such a grind. Okay, thanks and happy hacking.